Hey guys, we're now going to talk about unit analysis, which is the idea that equations must have unit consistency. So unit analysis, which is also known as dimensional analysis. Now, dimensional analysis in chemistry means an entirely different thing. It's the way by which you convert units. But in physics, dimensional analysis often refers to unit analysis, which again is the idea that equations must be dimensionally consistent. The units on both sides of the equation have to be the same. They have to check out. Okay, so here's a quick example. Here's an equation. Speed is distance over time. So if you move things around, if I move this uh, time to the left, I get that distance is speed over time, right? So because distance is measured in meters and time is measured in seconds, I have that speed, which is distance over time, has to be measured in distances in meters and time is in seconds. So speed is measured in meters per second. So that equation um, is dimensionally consistent, and so must this variation here. So distance equals speed over time. Let's see how this is dimensionally consistent. So speed is meters per second, and time is measured in seconds. So what happens here is that you're multiplying them, so the seconds cancel, and I'm left with meters. So distance is speed over time. Distance is measured in meters. So both the left and the right side of the equation have the same units. So this equation is dimensionally consistent, right? That's the idea. It checks out. So let's do an example. It says here, suppose Wikipedia says that the distance y measured in meters that an object free falls from rest in t seconds is given by this equation. And this is actually correct. It's not just Wikipedia making it up where g is the acceleration due to gravity. We'll talk about that later. But for now, it suffices to know that the units is meters per second squared. And the question is, is this equation dimensionally consistent? So let me just show you how this works. You're going to write the equation, and you're going to replace all the variables with their units. So it says here that y is measured in meters. I can just cancel out half, because half is not um, a measurement. It's just a, a multiplier a factor. G says here is measured in meters per second squared. So I'm going to do this. Meters over seconds squared. And time is measured in seconds. And then I have to see if this stuff checks out. So seconds squared here multiplied with seconds squared here cancels. And I have meters equals meters. So this equation is dimensionally consistent. Okay? That's all it is. So let me do another example that's similar to this. So another kind of question would ask you not um, if it's dimensionally consistent, but it would give you an equation and say, what are the units for this one particular variable? So for example, Hooke's law, which we'll see later, says that the restoring force F in a spring is related to the displacement from equilibrium X, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is the equation, right? F equals negative KX. It says if F is measured in Newtons, so I'm going to replace with Newtons. And x is measured in meters. What units must the force constant k have? So all I'm going to do here is solve for k. Okay. And by the way, just like how I ignore the half here, it's just a multiplier, um, I can ignore the negative sign as well. So if I move, uh, if I solve for k, move m out of the way, it looks like this. And that must be... For this equation to be consistent, that has to be the unit for k, and that is the correct answer. So k is measured in newtons per meter, and I got that by moving things around in that equation. Okay? So now I'd like you guys to try practice 3 and practice 4. They're very similar to examples 1 and 2. So what you would do is pause the video, give it a shot, um, and then come back, and hopefully you got the right answer. So I'm going to just keep going. So practice 3 says distance x is measured in meters, time is measured in seconds, velocity is measured in meters per second, and it's just going to tell you the units for all of these different things, so you can plug them in and check if they're dimensionally consistent. So let's jump right into it. So velocity is measured in meters per second, but that velocity is squared, so it's meters per second. The whole thing is squared equals 2. Remember that 2 I can just drop. I'm only looking at the units. Acceleration is meters per second squared. And x is distance, which is meters. And I have to see, are these two the same? Well, on the left, I have meters squared, second squared. And on the right, I have 
there are two meters here, so I have meters squared over second squared. They are the same, so yes, these are dimensionally consistent. Okay? Um, if you haven't tried B, you should give it a shot now and try to make sure that you're getting these right. Let's do it. Um, meters per second squared. I'm going to go ahead and put a square already here and here because I know that they're both getting squared. The 2 goes away. Acceleration is meters per second squared. And then times time. Time is seconds. So one of these two seconds down here cancels with this. So I have meters squared second squared equals meters, only one meter, and only one second. This is not the same. So this is not dimensionally consistent. Okay, because you have different units on the two sides. Even though they're the same, meter second, meter second, obviously these are squared and these aren't. So that's different enough. And let's look at this other one here. F, it says here F is measured in newtons, but a newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared. That's all that's on the left. And on the right I have um, M. M is mass, which is in kilograms. Then I have velocity 2 minus velocity 1. So let me show you how to handle that. And I'll show you by doing an example. 3 meters per second minus 2 meters per second is 1 meters per second, right? 3 apples minus 2 apples is 1 apple. So the unit for this whole thing is just a unit for velocity, which is meters per second. And then I have this whole thing is being divided by t. So this whole thing is being divided by seconds. Another way that you can do this that might look a little bit easier is whenever you're dividing by something, a divided by b, it's the same thing as a times 1 over b. Notice how the b is just in the bottom. So if I want, I can kind of do this as times 1 over s. And the reason I'm doing this is to make it easy to see that these two S's actually go together, right? So this is kilograms, meters, second square. And this is kilograms, meters, and also second square. So they're actually the same. And this is dimensionally consistent, okay? Hopefully got that right. Um, you should try practice four if you haven't yet. I'm going to jump right into it, and it's very similar to number two. So let's go. Newton's law of gravitation states that the attraction between two objects is given by this equation, and it tells you what the units for all these different things are, and it's asking what is the unit that G must have, right? So this big G over here. So again, I write the equation, and I replace everything with their units. F is kilograms, meters per second squared. G is what we're looking for. This is kilograms times kilograms divided by um, R is, it says R is in meters. So this is meters squared. Now what I have to do is solve for G, move all the units around. So let's do that real quick. Notice that one kilogram cancels here. This mass has to go up, so I have mass times mass squared divided by second squared. And then this kilogram up here has to go to the other side. It's a top, so it's going to go to the bottom. And then I have this. Now I just have to clean this up a little bit. And I get cubic meters over kilograms second squared. Obviously the order of these two guys in the bottom doesn't really matter. Um, so cubic meter kilogram second square it's option B okay so again hopefully you got that and that's it for now